Welcome to my apiary. I'm finally to the point where I'm actually assembling covers. Uh, I've done, I don't know, maybe 25, 30 so far. And of course, customer's priority is 200. So I have a ways to go. But it's going well. So uh, I just thought I'd maybe just do a couple and show you how I'm putting these together. Okay, so to start with, I'll say that all of my parts are cut to be a little too wide. And I guess when you talk about parts like this, it'd be too long. Uh, the point is, when I start, I choose a side. First thing I do is choose a side uh, that looks nicer, you know. So that one looks maybe a little nicer than that one, and I'll put that down. And then I choose a side that I'm going to trim. So on this cover, I've chosen this side, and I've just put a mark here with a little magic marker I have here. So I want to start with my uh, side that I'm not going to trim toward me. And all of the rest of my parts are also cut a little bit long. And long is maybe an eighth of an inch long uh, or more. You don't want to waste too much equip, uh, uh, material. But the cover, the box is 16 and 5 eighths wide. Now don't forget, uh, my country, the boxes are made of 7 eighths material, so your boxes may be different. And so these lids are 16 and 5 eighths wide, so my plywood is cut to about 16 and 3 quarter. Why that is, is that I can flush everything to one side. Uh, well, I'll back up here. Because there's so many different parts. There's, there's uh, two cleats on each end, so that's four parts, plywood five parts, and there's a couple of uh, uh, shims on the bottom that will also determine uh, a width. So, you know, that's seven parts. So seven parts that you have to get absolutely perfectly the same length. Um, and that's really not reasonable, uh, a reasonable expectation. So again, I'll flush everything to one side, which this side near me, I'll flush them here. Everything will hang over, be too long at least. Doesn't matter really how far it hangs over. And then when I'm all done, I can run this side along the fence on the table saw and trim that side perfectly to 16 and 5 eighths. Okay. So of course I'm using Tight Bond 3 waterproof glue. I've got an uh, inch and a quarter, no actually I've got one inch narrow crown staples for the shims on the bottom. The uh, cleats are all nailed on with 16 gauge inch and a half nails. The top cleat is screwed in from the bottom with an inch and a quarter, number eight inch and a quarter wood screw. And, uh, and that's about it, so we'll get, get to this and kind of just show you how I've been putting these together. I just run, run a bead of glue kind of in here. Kind of see, kind of see that. Get my glue out of the way. So again, get my thumb here and I'll flush that up best I can right there. Grab my brad nail gun and put one in right there. Now I want to do uh, four, four more. And I want to make sure that the, the plywood is pressed down to my work surface and the cleat is pressed down to the work surface uh, so that, uh, and I'll show you why, the joint you know, on the top. Okay, so I'll just show you the joint now. Here, so this is the flush side, and so you can see how that joint goes together. Lots of glue surface, 
and theoretically it's going to be flush here, which that's actually perfect. I'll turn this around and uh, so that I work right handed better, so I turn it around. But I have to remember that now my flush edge is away from me here. Do my glue here again. Whoops, I made a mess. Okay, flush it at the far end this time. And then That's five nails in each one of those. Okay, now I'm going to flip that over. And again, now I'm following my flush edge. It's, it's uh, near me this time. I want to check these. And I want to put the good side down. Okay. Any imperfections? I'll put that up because this is my glue side, and uh, I want to get a little tray and roller for this. It'd be a lot better, but I don't have that yet. So I just rub them. I rub them and make a mess. That actually spreads glue really well. Okay, and I can always check my flush edge is here. So again, I flush my top cleat to this side. So we're here on the back end of this, but I'm just using my thumb and my finger to flush it there, and then flush this end, and then get three more nails in that. And a whole bunch of glue squeezed out, so we'll just give that a wipe. Sometimes you don't need to wipe, it doesn't matter, but there's certain places where you want to keep it clean. And one place you want to make sure it's clean before you set it aside is the flush side, because that side's going to run along the fence and it needs to be clean. If it's not clean, then you'll be cleaning it later and it's way harder after it dries. Done driving nails. Just want to make sure there's not too much glue there. If there's a lot of glue squeeze out here, uh, when I turn it over, it's going to run on there, and I don't want that. I don't want that to stay pretty clean. Okay, so uh, next step is to run the screws into the into the top cleat. I use four. Get them nice and close to that. Huh. Guess what? I hit that nail. I hit that nail there. That was a good shot. Again, don't overdrive these. Never had one go through, but you overdrive it, you could have it come through that cleat. It goes into a three-quarter cleat, uh, half an inch. A little longer bit, because uh, with a shorter bit, my chuck was hitting the end cleat here. So I just got a longer bit on there. Hangs on real good. Hit that other nail too. It uh, it did go in. Okay, again, close up. You can see those screws there, and they pull that 
cleat right down. You can see the extra squeeze out there and here. Uh, <laughs> here, uh, where the, the screws have pulled that cleat down to the top. Okay, so now, kind of the messiest and trickiest part is getting the glue along here because I want glue on the plywood, but I also want glue on this end cleat to glue that shim. You'll see what I mean in a second. this glue with my finger and it kind of goes along the back the vertical surface and the horizontal surface there okay and this is the first one to go on and again I check double check that's my flush side and that's the last one to go on so this is my first shim and this is where I'm using the one inch narrow crown staple. And it's a narrow crown staple, it's not a narrow crown staple. I guess you could call it a crown staple if you want. It's a staple, but it has a narrow crown. Those large staples I was using on the pallets, that's a medium crown staple. Okay. And the word height has two H's. H-E-I-G-H-T. Height. Okay, so those shims completely cover those screws. Not that it matters. put the screw in first. And the last shim here, right at the edge. Okay. So I just want to make sure there's not glue on top of the shims. And then again, double check this flush side that there's not a bunch of squeeze out, a little bit dripping in there. Uh, the top for squeeze out, I can just run my finger along it. This um, other side, I'm not concerned about squeeze out. This is the side that will be trimmed, so that can be as messy as possible. Uh, this is my nice side, okay, which <laughs> in the end of the game, this will be the nice side because it'll be all nicely, all nicely trimmed there. Can't get messy. Your fingers away from those nails. They will come out sideways a lot of times. Right through your finger. And I know that by experience, I'll tell you. That is no fun. I nailed my finger to it. Frame, a, a, a beehive frame one time. It wasn't good. I pulled my hand away and it wouldn't come away. Just go sticking right through my thumb.
sounds worse than it was. It was bad, but it sounds worse than it was. It was actually, it was actually just kind of, just through the very corner, kind of right there. I mean, it's not like it went like this through there, but through my thumb enough that it was not good. If that bit slips on the screw, that means you're not in line with the screw. It's not a failing of the bit or the screw. I mean, the bits can wear out, but that one's not worn out. If you're in line with it, I mean, it, you can see how hard it is to pull the bit out of the screw a lot of the time. Lift that right up. <laughs> so you have to pull it out. So it's not the bit. It's the operator. I get a little glue on the end where it butts up to the other shim. There's usually a puddle somewhere to accommodate. It doesn't take too long to do each one. Now there's that trim and there's a bunch of roundovers and I'll show you that when the time comes. A little bit of glue squeeze out there, clean up a little bit along here. So we talked about wood movement and I didn't have a cover to show you. But just quickly, as we, as we kind of talked about uh, this plywood and if, if particularly if this was lumber, if you were using, the Aussies call it timber. If you're using lumber for your, which you could use uh, just boards, but the boards will will shrink and leave gaps. But anyway, so this plywood will tend to warp uh, in this direction if it's going to warp. It's either going to dish or it's going to hump here. So uh, what we have here is we have, you know, we have this top cleat on each end. We have this end cleat, and those are so well secured, glued, nailed, screwed. They're really not going to come apart. And then the long way, we have this, this half inch shim. So that really doesn't offer, certainly not as much as what's on the end here, uh, but the propensity is it will not be for this to warp in this direction as readily it'll warp in that direction more readily. So that is the wood movement on the covers. So I think I'll leave you with that today. There's nothing really more than that to see and nothing more than that to say, really. Uh, again, I don't know what I have 30 or so done. Uh, maybe more than that. So we'll get them done, they'll get, get dried and then we'll start trimming, trimming and round over and then we'll pack them for shipping. Uh, which, I mean, shipping on my trailer behind my truck. So, okay. So a short video today. Have a great day.